Gents, I'm here to tell you that after reading dozens and dozens of books on men's style, patterns start to emerge. So one of the first things I noticed, especially going through the older books, is most of the examples are of politicians, titans of industry, not celebrities. I mean, yeah, there's some socialites, movie stars, royalty, maybe a few athletes, but yeah, all the guys featured here did incredible things with their lives. In fact, in one of my favorite style books, which yes, I will share with you which one it is a little bit later in this video. In this book, pretty much every man featured made a dent in history and while doing so looked amazing. Gents, I tell you all this because so many times I hear men say that style doesn't matter. That real men focus in on power, that real men focus in on money, that they don't care how they dress. Well, gents, I'm here to tell you that that line of thinking is bull. Seriously, the most powerful men in history all cared about their style and they crafted their personal image to serve them. How did they do it? Well, in today's video, gents, I'm going to share with you the information I gleaned from these books here. So the first book on this list is one I'm assuming that most of you guys have not read, and that is How to Read a Suit by Lydia Edwards. Published in 2020, this book does an excellent job of covering 330 years of suit history. Now, as with any bit of research, there were limitations to the book. Most of the suits that she's drawing from are from France or from England. Then she shifts over to the United States. There's definitely a lot of periods that are missed. But for the novice historian, this is an excellent read and breakout. And the lesson to take from this is the suit has been with us for hundreds of years. Men use it as a signal of status, of power, where they belong in society. The suit has been and will continue to be for men a form of nonverbal communication. Which should make perfect sense to you Jordan Peterson fans. Remember the first chapter, Stand Up Straight, he talks the story about the lobster and other animals that use visuals to basically prevent fighting and damage to themselves and it just sends the signal, hey, this is where I belong in society, get out of my way, or hey, I should get out of yours. This info in here also supports what I've talked about with the Lindy effect and why you shouldn't be afraid to spend good money on a good looking suit. If you don't remember, the Lindy effect is basically something will continue to be around as long as it actually has been around. The point here, gentlemen, is the suit isn't going anywhere, especially if you want to project power, if you want to come off as high status. Find a suit that fits you well, works for your body type, is of a classic color, and you are off to a great start. Now, gents, today's video is sponsored by my friends over at Anson Belt and Buckle. For over a decade, I've been wearing Anson's belts and buckles because they're timeless. On top of that, you guys know I love interchangeability. One of my favorite things about this is how all the buckles work with all the straps. Now, me personally, I love their Premier Collection. These are all handcrafted in the USA with crocodile or Italian calfskin. On top of that, let's talk about innovation, their micro adjust system. So, if you own a regular belt, you know that you can only adjust it every inch. What I love about Anson Belt and Buckle's micro adjust system is that you can adjust to the quarter inch. So the belt is going to be more comfortable and it doesn't get bent out of shape. And I have to say, gents, that's what makes Anson Belt and Buckle such great gifts is that you get to cut the strap to adjust. You get one strap, you cut it to fit and boom, you've got the perfect fit. And speaking of cutting to adjust, don't be scared because this is one of the stories I love to share. I know one of you guys bought one of their belts and you cut it too short and you realize, okay, I, I've got to get a new strap. It was my fault. You reached out to Anson Belt and Buckle, the guy said that, hey, Dave took care of him just like family. That's why I love this company. Now, gents, when you go over to their website, you got tons of options, tons of straps, but to make this easy, down in the description of today's video, we've got an awesome package where you can grab two straps and three buckles or two buckles and three straps. That's six belt combinations in their most popular box and you can get this for under a hundred bucks. That being said, if you don't know where to start, if you're like, you know, I'm going to be on the fence, join their text club. They occasionally have a flash sale. They're one of my favorite companies. I have worked with these guys again for over a decade. I love what they're doing. I know the founders personally, an awesome father, son, family run business. Check them out. Awesome deal. Yeah, use that link. Go check out Anson Belt and Buckle. Now, this next book published in 2002 was one of a half dozen books that had a profound impact on me when I first got started in men's style. In fact, the author of this book earned his stripes working with the costume designers on the movie Wall Street. Now, if you're not familiar with that film, which was released in 1987, it set the tone for what a powerful man on Wall Street should look like. So, the book I'm talking about is Dressing the Man 
by Alan Flusser. I've got probably three copies of this book, one at home, two here in the office, and to this day, I still go back and reference the information that Alan Flusser has put into this amazing book. Now, I do own a number of his other books as well, Style and the Man, which is a simpler read. It's much smaller, doesn't have the color photographs, but if you want to pick up something you can buy on a budget or travel with because it's relatively small, is a great read. And there's also his older book, Clothes and the Man. Now, at first glance, Clothes and the Man does come off as a bit dated. It is. In addition, if you already own Dressing the Man, you're going to find that most of the information is redundant. However, there is one section on clothes clothes and the man where we can see actually how a suit should fit different body types. This is something I wish he would have brought into his later books. It's very nuanced, but a detail I appreciated as an up and coming custom clothier to better understand how body type and clothing fit works. Fit is king and finding the right fit for your body type is why you need to have a relationship with your tailor. Now, in the books, he actually shows a number of examples. It was really the first time I saw how a good suit should look on a man versus how a bad suit and pointing out the small details, like when it's too tight in the button area, why you get that bunching up in the back of the shoulders, maybe around the armhole, and the importance of getting the right fit for your proportions. So you're gonna have some taller guys who are gonna have smaller torsos, or they're gonna have really long legs. If you're a shorter guy, how showing just that little bit of shirt cuff makes a big difference versus if you don't, how the jacket can look too big on you. And again, I love how Flusser explained this with simple to understand pictures. So here he's talking about proportion and the size of a man's head. If you've got a larger head, if you've got a hairstyle that makes your head look larger, make sure you're wearing a jacket whose shoulders make your head look proportional. In fact, fit, proportion, they were so important that he put them at the very beginning of the book. And he expressed that if you don't understand this, everything I'm about to talk about doesn't matter. You've got to nail these foundational principles first. The lesson here, dressing well, isn't about buying expensive clothing. It's about making sure that your clothing fits your body, your build, your proportions, and taking the time first to understand this, then make sure you're working with the tailor, or if it's just you, you make sure you're buying the clothing that proportionally fits you well. Straight up, so many guys think to dress in a powerful manner, to have true style, all you need is money, that's not true. What they talk about in all these books is understanding yourself, understanding the proportions and the fit that work for you, and then making sure you only clothe yourself with clothing that actually enhances your natural style and build. Now, this next book, I have three copies of it. Now, to my defense, they are three different editions of the same book, and he used different models. I wanted to see if there wasn't really much of a difference. I will tell you that if you buy any of the books, you're pretty much going to get the same thing, although I think the newest version is the best. The book I'm talking about, gentlemen, is Bernhard Rotel's Gentleman. So, this book right here is definitely in my top five of men's style books of all time. Now, Bernhard is German, and like a good German, he paid attention to the details. There are tons of great images. Uh, all He went into excruciating detail in the various parts of building a classic man's wardrobe. It was in this book that I learned to understand the importance of details and why they matter. So, in 2007, when I started down the path of style, I thought a dress shirt was, well, a dress shirt. No, Bernhard schooled me. And there are like 15 pages in which he breaks out not only all the details, the style details, all the different collar types. Apparently, there's an endless number of collar types, but he broke out like 15 of them. But then he goes into all the various types of cotton that come from various parts of the world, why you want to go with certain ones, understanding yarns, understanding strands. I mean, I don't want to ruin the book for you, but he gives an entire section on how to fold a shirt properly. And to be honest, a lot of these details, it may seem like it's overkill. I mean, why, why the hell does this really matter? Well, here's the deal. Details do matter, especially to the type of person that's going to be out there spending hundreds, if not close to a thousand dollars on a dress shirt. And this type of man, this type of person, they're usually in a position of power. They've got that and they care about the artistry. They care about the details. They care about the fact that they're, you know, I was over on German Street. Uh, after I'd read this book, I was able to actually have a conversation with these shirt makers and they appreciated my knowledge. All of a sudden, I was given access to certain bits of information and they spent more time with me because in their minds, I came off as someone that cared about the craft. Now, is an expensive dress shirt going to make you look that much more powerful? Probably not that much, but the fact that you understand and you pay attention to the details in your shirt, people are going to understand. You probably pay attention to other things, other details when it comes to your company, when it comes to the businesses you work for or the businesses you run. 
And that was one of the key lessons in Bernhard's writing is talking about the importance of everyday things, but taken to that next level, the accessories, the details. They had an entire section on pens, which may not seem like a big deal, except when you think about that laws are still signed in using pens. And that's a big deal. Actually, if you had, didn't know that at the US Congress or you know the president, when he signs things, he goes through a number of pens and people love to keep those things. They have meaning, they have significance. Another area where details really matter, watches. And he goes into all great detail. Now, this is an overview. I've got entire books on watches. But Bernhard did me a great service by showing me the attention that goes into it and how deep some of these topics can go. I guess in many ways, I can blame him for going off and grabbing even more books on these particular subjects. Now, earlier I talked about a book that's one of my favorites. I'm excited to bring you, actually, there's two books by this author. And I don't think he gets a lot of attention. And so hopefully, if you've never heard of this guy, you will go grab one of his books because they are friggin' amazing. And what I love about these books is how practical they are. You can take this information and you can improve and build your wardrobe starting today. The author I'm talking about is Josh Sims and his books are Men of Style and Icons of Style. What I love about Men of Style that I mentioned earlier is that a lot of the icons, a lot of the guys he brings up, these are historical figures that have had a significant impact on sport, on music, on the Hollywood screen, on politics, different eras, different times, different nationalities, but style is a universal language. And that's what I love with Josh Sims gets across. Examples of powerful men that crafted an image to serve them. Now, his other book, I think a lot of you guys are going to find even better because he doesn't talk so much about the individuals as he talks about the individual pieces that should make up your wardrobe. And that's what he means by icons of men's style. It's not the people, it's actually the pieces. And he goes through, he talks about just classic pieces that if you can't tell by all the markings, I have talked about many times in my videos and he goes into excruciating detail. So uh, yeah, if you grab this book, don't be surprised. You're going to see a lot of things I have straight up stolen. I mean, I didn't steal it. I mean, it's not like the guy invented the pea coat, but I loved how he had everything in one volume. So for those of you guys looking to bring in classic pieces that for decades, if not in some cases over a hundred years, have helped men project power, project strength. Guys, right here, this book is one you want to grab. Now, these next two books in many ways are polar opposites, but I'm going to highlight them both because I think both of these authors take a fun, playful approach to dressing sharp and being able to use that to your advantage. So the first book I want to talk about is Nicholas Anton Giovanni's The Suit. Now, if you're familiar with Machiavelli's The Prince, written in the 16th century, this was written for rulers on how to maintain power, all the underhand things that you have to do. And this book is in many ways written with that same type of theme, the idea that you want to be able to use your image, you want to be able to use your style to get what you want out of life. Now, this was probably the third book I owned on men's style. It was the first one that really didn't have any pictures. I just read it right through and it had a profound impact on me because I had never thought of using style as a tool. So many guys, I get it. You don't want to dress well because you think it's uncomfortable. You don't want to spend the money. But when you understand it's a form of nonverbal communication and that people have been using image and style since the beginning of time to be able to send that message of who they are, where they stand. So people just leave them alone or they defer to them because they look like they're powerful. All of a sudden you realize how powerful it is and why you should invest in your image. And although the book, as I said, is short on images, it is well described and he gets the principles right. In fact, as I'm reading this, I'm like, wow, this reads a lot like Flusser, except, you know, a little bit more humorous. And I thought it was just a really easy read. If you've got a good imagination, if you can visualize, and if you just like a damn good read, The Suit is an excellent choice. Now, this next book is equally as funny, if not even more. It's written from the view of a New Yorker, Glenn O'Brien. This guy I know wrote for a number of magazines and he's talked about style for decades. And what he put in here really is a great, simple read for the guy that wants to be able to improve his style, but likes that tongue in cheek approach to it. Now, in this book, Glenn talks about things that I didn't see covered in other ones, such as behavior, growing up. In a sense, this book is probably written for the younger man that's maybe just graduating college, just graduating high school. So I think it would make an excellent gift. But he also goes into details about the importance of having a personal uniform, having an outfit that you default to, which sends the signal you want. You guys have if you've watched my videos. You've heard me repeat this because so many guys think to project power, to project strength, 
that you're going to have to think every day or you got to wear a suit every day. That's not the case. You need to just think about the message. Think about wearing that right clothing. Set it up so it's on autopilot. I know for me, I've got an outfit. I've got a set type of clothing that I gravitate towards without even having to think. And that's key. Whenever you can dress in a manner that you project the message you want to and you didn't even think about it, it becomes a habit. It becomes a ritual. It becomes a routine. Overall, a good fun read. All right, Jen, so what video to watch next? Boom, I got you covered with this one right here. Yeah, click on it. Go to the next video. Check it out. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments. I know I didn't cover all of these books. Hey, we got future videos coming. Let me know if you want to see more like this. I'd love to hear from you. Take care. Ooh, see you in the next video. Yeah, right there. Come on. I'm waiting.